Okay then, so right now we can add new books in our application, which saves that book as a new hash in Redis. But if I wanted to, I could add another book with the same title at the moment. There's nothing stopping me doing that. And it might be that in your application, you want each book to have a unique title to avoid duplicates. And I want to implement that functionality in our application too. So there's a number of different ways to do this, but I want to use this opportunity to introduce a new data type to solve this problem called sorted sets. And by using a sorted set, we're also going to be solving another little problem that we haven't yet run into. So to begin with, I want to talk a little bit about what a sorted set is and how we use them. And then we'll use that knowledge to make sure that when a user adds a new book, that book title hasn't been used or added before. So then, a sorted set is much like a normal set in that it's a collection of unique string values, which are called members, remember? But whereas in a normal set, those members are unordered, in a sorted set, the members are ordered or sorted according to a score value, which is associated with each member. So let me bring back over Insight and we can start working with sorted sets. I'm going to clear all these down here. And then to add a new sorted set, we say Z first of all, and then add. And this is how we add new members to a sorted set as well. And you can see what we have to do here. First of all, a key, then a score, and then the member associated with that score. And we can carry that pattern on, score, then member, score, then member. So let's do that. Let's create a new sorted set called books. And then the score of the first one will be seven. And that is gonna be the name of the wind and then we can add more on so I could say two and then say the wise man's fear is the second one and then another one I could say seven or let's use another number we've not used yet nine and then that's going to be the final empire so I can control enter now and that's going to add those three elements to this new books set and if we go over here we should be able to see that book set right here and we can see the three members and the associated score so this one at the top the lowest number is highest and then nine at the bottom so it's sorted them according to that score so if i want to add new members to that sorted set i can use z add again also if i want to override one of the members i can do z add as well so i could say z add and then it's books and then i could update one of the members score to be one and that's going to be the final empire one so it will look inside the set for this member and it will update that score to one because it already exists so if we go back over here and take a look the final empire is now one awesome okay so what if i want to look into a set and only add this item if it doesn't exist and if it does exist i don't want to update it so you know a minute ago we ran this command and it updated the final empire from whatever it was, I think it was seven to one. Well, I want to look into the set and say, okay, this already exists. So we're not gonna add it and we're not actually going to update the score either. I only want to add this if it doesn't exist. Well, the way we can do that is by adding on a flag before the score, NX, and we've seen that flag before. So this says only go into the set and update this or rather add it if it doesn't already exist, this member. Don't update it if it does exist. So I could change this to five and control enter. And if we go to the browser, it shouldn't change from one. It doesn't because that already exists. But if we go over here and just change the title a little bit, let's just say the final empires, which is different, control enter. Now it is gonna add it. So let's go back to the browser and we can see this one has been added as well. So when we use the NX flag, it only adds new members. It doesn't update current members, okay? All right then, so we can get a range of different members from a sorted set as well. And the way we do that is by saying Z range. So Z range, and then we'll give it a key, which is books, and then the start position and the end position. So I could say books, and we're gonna start at position zero and go right to the end, which is minus one, press enter, and we get all of those books, all right? And then finally, we can delete a sorted set by saying Dell and then the name of the key, which is books and control enter. Hopefully that's going to delete that. You can see none right here. And when we refresh, it's completely gone. Awesome. 
So now let's use a sorted set in our application. So now we can use what we know about sorted sets to implement a nice bit of functionality into our application. So I want to make it so that if a user adds a book whose title has already been added in another book, then we don't add that book. So what I'm going to do is add each book title as a member to a sorted set, because remember, no two members of a sorted set can be the same. Now, as a return value, Redis gives us a one if we insert a new member into the set and a zero if we don't. Now, if we add a book title that's not been added yet, we'll obviously get a one back because we're adding that new title to the set. But if we try to add a book title that has already been added, we're going to get back a zero because it won't let us add that book to the set. And since we're not adding any new elements, we get back that zero. So we can do a quick check on that return value and use it to determine whether we actually go ahead and then add that book as a hash. So if it's already been added to the set previously, we don't then want to create the hash. Now, I said that each member in a sorted set has an associated score, right? And we don't need to use the score in a traditional sense here. They don't need to be in a particular order. But what I will do is use the book's ID as its score. And that way we can kind of use this sorted set as a bit of an index of book records as well, which we're going to use later on. So let's try setting all of this up. All right. So first of all, I will say const unique. You can call this what you want, but I'm calling it unique. And remember, that's going to be zero or one. And I'm setting it equal to await clients dot Z add. And then we're going to look for the books key. And then we need to add a new value and score. So the member is the value, and that's going to be the title, the book title that we want to add. And the score is going to be the ID. So let's add that in as well. Score is the ID. Now, as a third argument, we can pass in another object to specify any options. And I'm going to set NX to be true. So that's like passing the NX flag. And what that does is say, look, if the book title already exists, don't update the ID because I don't want to generate a new ID every time we try to add a book that's the same. I want that ID to stay the same, right? So now this right here is going to be either zero and one, and it would be zero or one even if this flag wasn't in. That's got nothing to do with the zero or one. That's just to do with updating the score. So it's going to be zero if it's already been added, and it's going to be one if it's not been added because we've just added it to the sorted set. So now we can do a little check. We can say if not unique. So that's basically if it's zero, then we're going to return an error. So return an object with an error property. And we'll just say that book has already been added. Now, this object right here gets returned to if we open up the create page this result constant, right? Because we're calling this action, which is this function over here, and then we're returning a value. So if there's an error, that object right here, result, is going to have the error property on it. We're checking for that error right here. And if it exists, then we're going to update the state right here to have that error. And that's being output right at the bottom down here. So we're going to see that error at the bottom of the form if we try to add a book that already exists. So let's give this a whirl. All right, so let me click on add new book. And the first thing I'd like to do is add a book that we've not already created as a hash. And that's going to do two things for us. First of all, it's going to create that set for us. And secondly, it's going to make sure that everything still works. So if we remember, let me bring over Redis Insight. We already have two books, but they're not inside a set yet. So in fact, let me delete them so we can start again, both of these. And then we'll add a new book over here. So we'll say the wheel of time and that's Robert Jordan and rating seven, uh, blah, blah, blah. And then let's add that book to make sure everything still works. We need to bring over Redis and a refresh. And now we can see we have that book record right here that works, but also we have this sorted set. We have the wheel of time, which is the title. And then the score, which is the ID 91807. If we go back, we can see that matches the ID here. So that works. Now I'm going to add a new one. And again, I'm going to add one that doesn't exist yet. So the final empire. And that's Brandon 
Sanderson. Let's give this a rating of nine and blah, blah, blah. And let's add this as well to make sure it works. Bring over Redis Insight and refresh. So we can see the hash, that's worked. And we should see another member inside the sorted set, which we did the final empire right here. Awesome. And the ID again is going to match up with this. So now what I'd like to do is try adding a book that does exist. So let's add a new book and let's again say the final empire, right? Now it doesn't matter what the other fields are, but we'll add them on anyway. Brandon Sanderson rating eight and whatever in here. It doesn't matter what they are because we're doing the check on this none of the rest, right? And now we should get an error back because this already exists inside the sorted set. So add the book and yet it says that book has already been added and we don't get redirected. And over here, if I refresh, we don't have a new hash. We've not updated the ID. And if we go to books, we still only have two values inside it. Awesome. So that's one good example of how we can use a sorted set or a set if you prefer to make sure that values are not duplicated in your application. There was another reason we were using a sorted set, and that was so we could grab all of the book titles and the IDs associated with those book titles on the homepage. And I'm gonna show you how we can do that in the next lesson.